Hey everybody, Poker Dad here. Uh, Going to be doing a, another study video today, and in this video, I have been mentioning it uh, the past couple of videos that I've done. That um, I was going to show you guys how I use Card Runners EV. Um, so that's what we're going to do in this video. Um, this right here, by the way, if you're not familiar with this, is a hand to note replayer. Uh, hand to note is what I've actually been using as my HUD um, of late, and it's also it just makes for amazing database review as well. Uh, but I'm not going to get too much into that right now. This this particular episode is going to be more about just analyzing a hand and doing it in Card Runners EV. So <clears throat> basically, the way that I like to use Card Runners EV, at least the way that I have found it to be the most um, um beneficial to me is by finding decision points and taking a look and seeing if i'm making the most uh if i'd be making the most ev play or not um or in this case here i just want to see um if i should be calling a raise or not uh if it would have been plus ev to call or if it would have been minus ev to call so first what i'm going to do here is in uh, the replayer here is I want to show you how to hand play it out so you know what it is that we're we're looking for. Um, so here I am in the uh, small blind and I raise it up here um, three big blinds for the steal. Um, now my opponent's fold the steal versus the big blind here is 62%. Um, so it is something that I could definitely I could definitely try and target him. Maybe it's a little bit too ambitious here. Um but uh I, I don't think it's the worst the worst uh worst play here. And my opponent calls. The graphic doesn't show up on the screen for some reason here, but my opponent actually does call. And we go to a flop of six two eight rainbow. So one of the reasons why I also picked out this hand here is I wanted to pick out a hand where I am playing from out of position, which makes it, of course, a little bit tougher. Uh, here I throw out a half pot C bet with a gut shot, and my opponent calls, and a two comes out, pairing the board. I throw out a second barrel with my gut shot. Um, keep in mind that the gut shot is on the higher end here, um, which is part of the reason why I am betting here. Um, so for, for example, if I had maybe a hand like, uh, a hand that had like a five, a five in it, as opposed to, um, like the 10, like if I had like nine, five suited or something like that, that I would have, um, that I would have bet here, um, then maybe it's a little bit different but here i got the top two of a gut shot so this is a better uh a better hand here to be betting or let's say even more so better than nine five let's just say i have like five four for example five four i think is a better uh a better example anyway or even like a hand like let's say i have like five seven open ender uh again that would be um then a little bit more questionable because it would be better if I had a hand like nine, uh, like nine seven. A nine seven would be better than than obviously uh, having like seven five or something like that. Anyway, my opponent raises here, and I do decide to fold. So what I am going to want to take a look at here is seeing if this was the correct fold or not. Uh, so anyway. We'll go back to preflop. First thing we need to do is we need to create some ranges. And uh, we will fo I, I will focus on um, card runners EV and a little bit later in the video. Uh, but we have to get to the decision point. So ultimately the decision point is I want to find out when he raises here, should I be calling or should I be folding? And that's what we're going to find out with card runners EV. So first thing first, we need to come up with some ranges. So I'm going to be sliding um, a lot of different programs on and off the screen here. So first thing, I'm going to throw in some Fopzilla here. And we'll make this one on top here my range, and we'll make this one here the villain's range. So my range, my small blind open raise range, is going to look like this one here. As you can see, the 10-9 offsuit is in there. 
but we want to see the entire range. Like I could just do this with um with just 109 uh with just 109 offsuit. Uh and sometimes I do that. Um but in this case here, um I want to get a little bit more in depth. So let's take a look and see what we would do with the entire range here because I also want to just gauge and get into the mindset of knowing which hands I want to um be uh, C betting here and whatnot because you know sure this hand is with 10-9 offsuit but it could be with any one of these hands here in this range and it's just I think a more complete way to do it now in terms of our opponent so he cold called me um from the uh, uh big blind versus small blind so let's see. So we show in general that he is cold calling 24% of his range, three betting 14% of his range. Um, his cold call from the big blind overall is 18%. But if we want to make this a simple exercise, um, we can do this. 24 and 14. Okay, this is specifically uh, from uh, big blind versus small blind. So hang on. So 24, so we make a range of 24 hands, 24%. Approximately. And we bring this over to 14. Let's see what we get. Now it's going to be more trashier hands that. All right. So uh, let's see what we got here. Um, well, we have an instance here. Um, if you take a look, I'll go, go back to this here. Um, where he um, cold call with A4 offsuit. So since we know he does that, let's bring in all these suited aces here. Let's take out a hand like 10-9 offsuit. Um, I think would be more appropriate here. I think he would three bet hands like these two. Um, I think these hands right here could all be fine the way they are. Um, and let's just say, for argument's sake, he would do like these bottom pocket pair type hands. And we'll say, okay, that these suited connector hands, he's not going to three bet the suited connector hands. So these are all hands we could think, okay, maybe he would call these hands and not three bet them. Let's add hands like this in there too. So maybe he'll, he'll three bet all the suited aces. Maybe he'll three bet all of these pocket pairs here, uh, but he would call uh, these hands here. I think this is a pretty fair cold call range. Big blind versus small blind um, from what we can see from his stats. So it doesn't seem like he is calling a ton from the big blind. Um, as we know, he's not because his fold of steel is 62%. So it is it is a little bit on the higher side. So he's not calling nearly enough big blind versus small blind. Okay. So next up, we what we're, we're going to want to do is we're going to figure out ranges for the flop. So a flop here is six to eight rainbow. So let's just drop this in here. Six of spades, two of hearts, and eight of clubs. So here um, we're going to be one of continuing with anywhere between 30 and 50% of our range. So from a combos point of view, let me pull up a calculator. From a combos point of view, okay, we have uh, 454 combos to start with. So let's say at most we're going to want to continue with 227 combos. Let's pull up Notepad real quick just to keep track of this. Uh, Where's my notepad? Okay, here it is. So, 
227 combos and we want to have roughly um, a 1 to 2 value to bluff ratio. So we're not going to guarantee get to 227 combos. We'll see what happens here. But in terms of value hands, um, 227 times 33% uh, would be about 74 value combos. Which would make the rest hundred and fifty three bluff. Now it's probably gonna be on the lower side here that we're going to be C betting. And the reason why we will be C betting on the lower amount here, um, like a lower frequency, is going to be because this is a really not a vulnerable board. Um, there are no uh, straight possibilities here. I mean, there is a straight draw, like if he has 9-7 or something like that, again, or like 7-5, uh, then he has like an open ender, but there are no, there are no flushes out here. This is a, you know, this really is not a super vulnerable board for most of our hands. Um, so for that particular reason, we could actually see that a lot less here. Um, so my guess is after we figure this out, it's going to be probably closer to 30%. But what I'm saying here is this is going to really be the max that we want to continue with here. We wouldn't want to continue really with more than 227. But I can see a scenario here, let's just say 30%, that we could be continuing with 136 combos and the number of value combos for that would be 44 value and then 92 bluff. I think that's probably the more realistic scenario, but Let's take a look first and see what exactly we'd be doing this with here. Um, so in terms of sets here, we'd have sets of eights, sixes, and twos. So, um, I mean, I don't want to slow play anything here. Um, there's really no reason to. Um, so let's, um, let me switch this over to combo mode. So that's going to be nine combos right there. And we have two pairs. We have eights and sixes. Okay, um, our over pairs, nines through aces. So I want to take hands that aren't vulnerable and can't be outdrawn. Um, and I want to bet those, but I can check ones that aren't vulnerable here. So that would be a reason for me to check the aces and bet everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the aces, but I'm going to bet king. I'm going to bet nines through kings here because the aces can't be outdrawn. So the aces actually make for a pretty good check call here. So right now we're at 41 value combos. Let's just take a look at anything else here. Um, top pairs here. Um, so for the most part here, the top pairs, they're kind of vulnerable here. Um, so actually, I think what we can do, hang on, I just want to move this over. The eights are vulnerable as well, except for really the eights, eight. So again, I think I'm just going to well really they're all they're all vulnerable here. Um it actually looks like we might be doing fifty percent because if I take the eights, my top pair, that's gonna put us at eighty value combos. But I could make a reason for holding back on the ace eight, and I think that's what I'm gonna do actually. Well, actually, here's the thing with the with the eights is we can actually all of these eights here, 
um, could actually come along is as backdoor draws. Well, ba actually, the backdoor draws would end up being a check. Probably end up checking the backdoor draws here, except for the ace eight. So, actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to focus for now because because some of these will come along anyway. Um, it's actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this ace eight offsuit for now, and this gives us 50 combos. And what about our other pairs? Um, pairs below. Um, the sevens here, we can bet the sevens. We can call, bet the sevens here. Anything like these weak pairs or stuff like that, we'll just check fold these hands. Um, so we can see bet here the the sixes. I don't have any offsuit sixes, so I'm not going to worry about these right now because um, these actually really can be more checked because um, you know the you know this, well at least the ones that are. Um, you know, we could check call the ones with um, with backdoor flush draws in them and check fold the ones that don't have back flush, back flush draws. Uh, the weak pairs, we would just check fold these hands. Okay, so we have here uh, 56 value combos. So somewhere in between. I mean, like I said, we just don't want to exceed 227 combos uh, because then we'd be c betting way too much here out of position. Uh, next up here, we're going to take a look at our draws. So really what we're looking to do is we're looking to bet our more nutted draws here. So seven, uh, nine, seven suited. Absolutely. Uh, so seven, five suited. So actually, yeah, seven, five suited. Um, I know I mentioned at the beginning of the video may not be another draw, but actually really it is because if a four comes out, then we do have, uh, then we do have a, a nut, uh, a, a nut um, straight to the eight. So the seven, five suited is definitely a hand that we want to uh, see bet here. The five, four suited, we can make a check call um, because, you know, if you know, we, we could still be outdrawn here with 5-4. So 5-4 is really kind of more towards towards the bottom here. Um, because let's just say, for instance, a 7 and a 9 come out. Our opponent has a 10, and we're beat. So that's a reason why the 5-4 just really isn't as good. Now, is that a likely scenario? Well, it could happen that a 9 and a 7 comes out, and our opponent does have a 10, and then we're on the bottom end of the uh, straight. So the 5-4 will make for a better check call here. So this gives us now uh, a total of 64 combos. And let's see, the gut shots. Let's take a look at the gut shots here. Uh, so 10-9 is definitely going to be a bet here. And the same thing with 10-7, because this again, uh, we're going to have the top end of the straight. And the 4-3 uh, would definitely be a check here. We can check all the 4-3. Okay. And the next thing we have here is backdoor flush draws. So for the backdoor flush draws here, um, we're going to be want we're going to want to bet all of our um, nut back flush draws. And we can check call the rest of them. So this puts us up now to 117 combos. So let's just take a look at our bluff the value at this point. We have 117 combos. How many value combos do we have? We'll count all pairs as value combos. Um, so we got 9 plus 2 plus 39 plus 6. So we have 56 value combos. And we have 12 plus 24 plus 127. Uh, that's not right. 
Uh, oh, I guess I need to do it this way. All right. Let me redo that. Sorry about that. This is live, kind of live. <laughs> I'm just doing this while on video. So, all right, 9 plus 2 plus 30 plus 11 plus 6. So 58 value. And 8 plus 20 plus 46 is 74. Uh, so let's see. So, uh, I messed something up here. Uh, seventy-seven. Yeah. So that's 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 pretty much right on target. Um, with a proper bluff to value ratio here. So that actually works out really really well. Um, because one hundred seventeen times thirty-three percent. Is thirty-eight. Uh, so actually, now it's a little bit less than uh, than one to two. Could we add more? Could we add more bluffs here? I mean, we could. It, you know, we could actually um, we could add the kings also. Actually, if we wanted to here, I don't see any problem with adding kings because kings second nut flush. Uh, I think we could. I can think we could bet the kings too. So let's bet these kings as well, just to get a few more bluffs in the range. I think this kind of will work at this point based on the amount of value hands that we're betting. So let's take a look now at how many bluffs we have. I don't want to get too bogged down in the combos here, but I think it is kind of important. So 147. Okay. That's a little bit closer. 99. All right. This is close enough. So this is the range that we're going to go with here um, for for our um, flop range, our flop uh, C betting range. So what would our opponent do here? Um, my opponent, if we're going to look at stats... My opponent's uh, full to C bet is only 33%. Just to kind of get a gauge of what he would be calling here. Now, our bet size was only was only half pot. Um, he is in he is in position, which lets allows him to call with a wider range. Um, so he is folding 33%, which means he's calling roughly 66%, which basically means he's calling uh, almost anything, uh, any draw, any pairs. So, and in terms of raising, um, looks like he's raising about 17% or so. So we'll say that that's probably, you know, hands like... Uh, two pair better. So here, of course, our opponent calls us. So what I'm just going to do, I like to clear this all out here. So we would think that he might be raising us here with a set. Um, would make logical sense here to raise here with twos. Um, so, you know, he is raising 17%, uh, to see bets. That may not seem like a lot, maybe it isn't, but I think it's still noteworthy. Um, so I think a hand like a set of twos, he would definitely want to raise here. Although with the board being so dry, maybe he wouldn't. So let's say, okay, the board being dry, he's actually not going to raise anything here. So let's actually have him call with the set. Because he's not going to be too worried about being outdrawn at this point. Um, you know, he really does have the nuts at this point, um, unless I have a better set. So he may decide to take a line where he calls here and then either bets the turn or raises the turn with a set. He doesn't have any two pairs, no over pair. 
Um, so he's going to call with his top pairs. He'll call with his middle pairs. And he'll call with his weak pairs. He's not going to fold those. Especially is a half pot bet, so it's not a big bet. Which, by the way, I don't like this bet sizing. I would have rather bet bigger here. Um, his backdoor flush draws. This is, he's calling with 38% of his range, but I mean, his range is really light. Unless he's going to call with like his, you know, once we start doing this here with the, I'm actually surprised. I guess he just has so many, like just so much garbage here in his range. And it, they're more over cars than normally hand. So, I mean, I guess he could be calling with all of his, um, We'll say he could call with all of his aces, unless he's going to call with all of his overcards here. Um, I think I like the chances better of him just calling with all of his aces here. So let's give him all of his aces. This would be kind of in line with what we might expect him to be doing here. Um, I could see him more calling with aces here. Um, considering that he does call a lot in position um, than, than the straight over cards themselves. So we're just going to have him do this with aces here. You know, I could be absolutely wrong, of course, on how this player thinks. I really have no idea. Um, so this is just more of an exercise than anything, and you know, we'll just see what happens. Uh, but this is just my guess, and based on his stats, is that in position he would call with, with ace high, especially, again, on a board like this that's kind of dry. It's not too dry. Um, so, you know, calling with an ace in position is, you know, not, not the worst idea here. So this is our ranges here on the flop. So this is important that we have these ranges here right now. Um, because we're getting close to that decision point. So now what we want to do is I'm going to open up Card Runner's EV. Let me swing these over to the side. We're going to get Card Runner's EV out. And we'll get started on this process. So we are small blind versus big blind. And let's set everything up here first. And the small blind here to start was 0.4. Because these are in, these are in blinds, big blind was one. Uh, this was played at ACR, so I'm gonna keep this stuff in mind. I get 27% rake back, and what I'm doing is adding chips to pot. I'm adding how much is in the pot at the start of the turn, which was 11.16 big blinds to start the turn, and we are going to start the tree here at the turn, and let's get this started. So first things first here is we want to put in the preflop ranges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this off screen is I'm going to take first what the preflop ranges were. So to do this, I just need to go backwards for a second. Luckily, it won't I won't lose my my place. So the big blinds calling range looked like this. And my open raising range looked like this. OK. Uh, one second, just got to bring back. I'm doing this off screen. Okay. The flop was six of spades, two of hearts, and eight of clubs. Okay. So now we're here at our first decision point. First, let's put in the two of clubs here. And 
what are we betting here, first of all, with the two of clubs? Let's bring back Flapzilla real quick. So here now, we want our bluff to value ratio more to be one to one in this spot. Let me just get rid of all this. And let's see what we want to be betting here and what we want to be calling here um, to double barrel. Well, we could have quads here. By the way, um, yeah, let's just focus on what we would want to bet here. You know, we want to bet quads, of course. We definitely want to bet our full houses, eights and sixes. Uh, something's rough here. Yeah. Okay. Eights and sixes. Right. Okay. Uh, our three of a concert of twos, of course, we're definitely going to bet these. And we definitely want to bet all of our over pairs here. Um, definitely want to bet our two pairs here. You know, these are all vulnerable here at this point. You know, there is now also a flush draw out there. Plus, it's a paired board as well. We want to definitely bet all of this stuff here. Um, double barrel here uh, with um, top pair. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I think we should. The pocket pair sevens, I think at this point, we could probably check fold this. middle pair um and we're gonna see actually we're actually gonna take a look at this actually um you know what actually let's do this let's let's do this a different way all right we're gonna do this a different way Right. We have our we have our opening ranges here. Okay. We're actually gonna do this a little bit differently. Hang on. Again, I apologize if this video is messy, but this is me going through the motions and figuring things out as we go. So actually, um we're just gonna go with this here. Alright, so we are going to either bet here. How much did we bet? Because I want to make it the same thing I bet here. I bet half pot, $5.56. So let's bet $5.56. The good thing about this is you get to see me kind of figure things out as I go and uncut uncensored videos. <laughs> Not that I curse. <laughs> so we could either bet or check here. And so the hands that, so this is what I want to figure out now. I gotta pause the video for a second. Okay, yeah, I had to give you some thought, and I didn't want to have to think about it on video while I tried to figure it out in my head exactly what the heck it is I'm doing. Okay, yeah, so um, I do want to continue going as I'm going here and figure out what I'm c-betting because again, the decision point we want to know more about is that raise, um, and if we should be calling it or folding it. So anyway, all right, so top pair, I definitely want to c-bet here. Pocket pair below top pair, we can check. Middle pair, check. All this, we're gonna check. Um, our flush draws here. Um, I think we just definitely want to double barrel all of our flush draws here at this point. I'm just looking to double barrel like a lot of stuff at this point. Um, open and a straight draw. I know like we're just <laughs> using a huge part of our range here. But I'm going to take a look at the percentage. And we are double barreling 70% of our range here um, out of position. There's really just, I mean, I guess what I could do is I could hold back on some flush draws and just check call some flush draws here. Um, if I check call, let's just say I decide to, I mean, how much, how much value do we have here as opposed to, we want it to be more closer to one-to-one, -to -one, so right? 
We don't want to be bluffing too much. We have... Hang on, i got to do that this way. All right. We have here 1 plus 6 plus 30 plus 13. So we have 50 value combos. 51, yeah. Okay, so it's one, it is one to one here. I mean, you could make the case that we could be maybe not betting our eights here and check calling eights. And then when we do that, um, hold back on our gut shots. But I would rather not because, I mean, our eights are definitely still kind of vulnerable here. So, you know, it's unlikely that he has an over pair unless he has like a pair of nine. So I think we should definitely be betting our eights here. They are super vulnerable. Um, so you sure we are betting 70% of our range here. Um, we are balanced in this spot here. I think that this is actually perfectly fine. So this is um, our double barrel range. So what I just want to do here. is put this here as our betting range. So that automatically this is going to take the rest of the hands in our range and make them folds or make or make them checks. So you can actually see on this diagram here that we're going to be checking everything else that's in um that's in green on this particular uh this particular picture. So um, all right, so we got two things that could possibly happen here. Um, our opponent now can raise us, call us, or fold. Okay. And we, and, and here for the checking aspect of it, um, since we're really, the decision point we're trying to figure out is the raise here. I'm not going to worry too much about what happens here, so I'm just going to say that he checks, and we'll just say check down, because I'm not really too concerned about this aspect of the hand. Um, really, what I am concerned about here is this decision point right here when he raises. Uh, so let's just close this part of the tree, too. We have to close these parts of the tree, um, because or else we won't be able to run the EV solver. Um, when uh when we're done here or ev count call it ev solver ev calculation i don't know what exactly you would call it anyway so we need to figure out here what exactly would the small blind be raising with here well let's take a look at flopzilla again and let's figure out what exactly is he raising with here let's just get rid of all these here first So he could be raising with claws, of course. Three of a kind. I mean, obviously, it's so unlikely he has quads, but three of a kind. Uh, is he raising with his top pairs? I don't think so. I think it would just be calling with those, all these pairs. Uh, flush draws. So um, could he be raising with his not flush draws would be the question. Uh, could be raising with all his flush draws. Uh, in position, I think it's just more likely he is raising with his nut flush draws. And could he be raising with a hand like 10-9 here, gut shot? I just, it's just unlikely. Um, you know, now that we're getting into obviously turn double barrel, um, I think it's kind, really kind of um, tough to say what he'd be doing here. Here, he did a, he did this with middle pair in an, in another hand. Um, as you can see, he did this with ten ten. So he did do it with middle pair, which is actually kind of interesting. Let's take a quick look at this hand that he played. This is interesting that he did this here in this particular hand. Um, so we know he's, so this is interesting. So we know he's capable of doing something like this. Um, so is he capable of doing something like raising top pair here?
Hmm. It almost makes me feel like he might be capable of doing that. If he's going to be raising 10-10 on that particular board, that's kind of interesting. Um, huh. That was very aggressive. I guess we can say that he, he might do that with top pair. Um, and with flush draws, is he doing all flush draws here? As a bluff? You know what? Let's say he's doing that too. Um, after seeing him raise with, with middle pair, raising with tens on a queen on a queen high board. Three of a kind. Obviously quads too. Uh yeah, I mean, why not? Raising with 22% of his range. He might actually do something like this. You know? Uh, that was a really weird play. All right. We're going to go with this. <laughs> this may seem kind of wacky, but we're going to go with this here. And I think I know going to know the answer when I do when I give him this kind of a kind of a raising range actually. And we're going to play around something else afterwards. Alright, so we got him raising with this. So, um, in terms of calling here, what I'm just going to do, just to make this a little bit easier, because we know we have him raising with quads, three of a kind, two pair, a top pair, and flush draw, um, is we are going to have him call with uh, at least... Um, I'd say at least one pair. So he'll call all of his pairs in position here again. Doesn't really seem too bright, but I, you know, we got to give him some hands to call. Um, have him call with his gut shot. And I don't think he'd be calling with anything much more than us here. It really seems kind of odd that, that he did that top pair. You know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to have him raise all of the top pair. I, I'm, I'm just going to have him raise... You know what? Maybe... Let's, this is what we're going to do. Let's just have him raise with the ace-8 and... The nine eight the nine nine eight's really a gut shot. The eight seven. Cause the nine eight is the nine eight a gut shot? Uh no it's not. Alright. So the nine eight Um, so we just have him calling, uh, we just have him raising the ace eight. All right. You can make the argument here, actually, if you want to even take it a step further, let's say that he is going to only raise his non- Nutted flush draws would be interesting, and actually might might make a little bit more sense here. Although he's going to want to build a pot with his nut flush draws. We want to give him some flush draws in his calling range. I don't want to take away all the flush draws in his calling range here. Um. So, okay, th that's what I did. Okay, we did that. No. Wait. Uh. Okay. All right. Let's 
So let's actually do this. Let's say he's just going to do this with enough with enough flush draws. Just makes a little bit more sense that he would raise with these combos. We've seen him, you know, we'd give him an eight because it seems crazy, but maybe he does things like this. Uh, but let's say he, he doesn't raise the uh, the other the other flush draws. So, and then in terms of calling, he's going to call at least. We'll say he'll call at least middle pair. And we'll say he'll call his flush draws. And there are no open enders here. So we'll say he calls his gut shots. And that means he's folding everything else. So now the question becomes what do we call and what do we and what what do we raise? What do we call it? What do we fold? Raise, call, fold. Okay. So in terms of raising, uh, oh, first of all, let's let's increase his uh, raise here. By the way, let's, what was his raise exactly? His raise was seventeen. So let's make that accurate. Uh, what happened? Oops, I screwed something up here. Okay. Um, so if we raise him here. This would be, I'm, I mean, in this spot here, we would just want to raise all in. So just for argument's sake, I'm just going to put two, 200 because that would make it all in. Uh, I guess it's got to be like... My, well, my stack size is 90, is at this point is 94.44. So I think that's fine. Just whatever, you can put that in there. Um, what do we have in my range that I would do that with? Um, oh, I have quads. So we could do that. We could do this with a hand like quads. We do it with a full house. So let's say I'm going to do this with a full house and quads. Let's do this for value. So now what I want to find out is what I should be calling and what I should be folding. And what what did I call what would I call that would be plus EV and what would I call that would be minus EV here? And again here for the time being, I'm just gonna put this as check down. Because I'm not really too worried about the river here. Um what would I be calling let's see what would be plus ev and what would be minus ev to call so this is now what we this is the decision point that we want to be at here um i don't think it'll give me it might give me a problem here if it does then i'll just have to fix this but let's take a look here ah yes i gotta fix this part here um here you i'd rather call a fold uh what's he gonna call with here uh we'll just say he'll call with um with enough flush draw, which is what he raised here, I would just say he'll call with 100% of his range because all these hands here were nutted hands. We'll say he will call with 100% of his range. Call all of his hands here. Okay. Um, so here's the decision point. This is what we want to see. We bet here, our opponent raises, and we want to see what exactly are is the EV of our hands. And let's see. So as you can see here, the EV of 10.9 offsuit to call would be minus 4.03. The hands that we would want to be calling here are our sets. This is interesting. Okay, so this I want to take. We're going to take a look at this here in a second. Uh, F three for EV. So our EV here for calling these sets is ninety seven point ninety one. Pretty good. Pretty good. It makes our EV um, 
right, is, by the way, you can take a look here. Our EV fit a hand with this particular range is six. But obviously, as you can see, 10.9 offsuit is um, is minus EV, is minus 4.03. What exactly? So everything else here. Uh, it's not actually the way I want to look at it. Where's here's the minus? Okay, so here's all the minus EV. So all these flush draws here, we shouldn't be folding. Even the as you can see, even even some of these nut flush draws here, we should actually be folding. All of these are minus EV. King six flush draw is plus EV. So we want to be calling. Now, this is plus EV. It's 2.07 EV, but it is really borderline because the EV is not huge, but it would still be plus EV to call it. Obviously, the, the, uh, the two, that's not a flush draw. And for the aces, even look, ace king suited the nut flush. The nut flushes here that don't include a pair, which in this case here would just really be a six. Well, actually, look, even the a six. This is interesting. That a six of clubs is minus EV, but king six of clubs is plus EV. Hmm. I wonder why that is, that a6, um, I guess because with a6, we're blocking out some potential bluffs that he could have where king6 were not, which would make king6 better than a6. And then the rest of these here are minus EV. Um, so really what this is saying is that the only plus EV play here is going to be calling with our our sets. So here's something interesting, okay? Let's look at something interesting. What if I raised my gut shot? I just want to take a look at the 10-9 offsuit. What if instead of calling the gut shot, we raise the gut shot? So let's raise the gut shot. I know this obviously seems kind of crazy, but I don't care. Because we're going to take a look anyway. Let's run the ca calculation again. Okay, it would be very minus EV. <laughs> just wanted, I just wanted to confirm. I just wanted to confirm. Yes, it would be very minus EV. <laughs> Let's take that away. The other thing I want to take a look at here is the sets, right? So the sets... Um, oh, so these sets we're actually we're raising here. Oh, duck, because they're full houses, they're not sets. And it's quads. So basically, what does this what does this tell you? Right? Don't call. Either raise or fold. There is no hand here that we could call that would be plus EV except for King uh King Six. What else here? Ace uh okay, so ace two, the twos as well. So the twos that we can call here. So what would be more plus EV? Let's just take a look, okay, at the twos. Right. Let's just write this down real quick in a notepad just to keep track of this. These twos. Uh, so the ace two is 25.79. And the king two is 23.17. So let's see if it's better to call these or to raise these here. 
So I'm actually going to take these and I'm going to say at least three of a kind and that will bring those over. So now we can see that raising ace two here gives us an EV of 84.34. <laughs> Big difference, right? And king two, 71.79. So the expectations of raising ace two and king two here, shoving all in with R with twos, is incredibly higher than just calling them. So really, we should be in a raise or fold mindset here, where we're just not calling anything. Um, well, that is not true. That is not true if you take a look, because kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines, ten nine suited, obviously do I see it's no good, ten nine suited, so this is interesting, ten nine suited, so ten nine offsuit got shot, but ten nine suited, we're calling uh, with the clubs, which makes sense because it's a combo draw. We can get the flush or we can get the straight. So 10-9 suited actually makes for a good call. So this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. So that's great actually. Now 10-7 suited. Mm. It's a gut shot too, but it's less EV, but it's still plus EV. 9-7. So the gut shots with a, so the combo draws, the gut shots with a, with a, um, with a flush draw should be called. Uh, 8-6, of course, we're calling the two pairs as well. So we do have hands we're calling here. The 7-5. Basically, so we're calling, um, we're calling, we're calling flush draws that have straight draws in them. So the flush draws that we're folding here, it's interesting when you look at it this way. Okay, so the flush draws we're folding, if we're going to be folding the nut flush draws and the king high flush draws, but we're going to be calling our gut shot plus flush draws. That's actually really interesting. That's really interesting. That's pretty cool, actually. That is pretty cool. This is great. You know, this is why I do this exercise. Because, you know, obviously, in terms of for our hand here, right, we made the right play. We folded. But this is why it's fun to and informative to look at other types of hands. And this is really a great exercise for this particular reason. Now, one last thing we can do here, uh, and then we're going to shut down the video, is I want to show you guys what I also like to do after this is, uh, let me just save this here. Uh, before I alter this. Uh, so this was... 10-9 off from the small blind manual. Uh, hang on. This was played uh, 8 22 um, So what you can also do here, which is really cool, is you can use max exploit tool. So we can see what the most exploitative line was here. Um, and I really like this feature. And we're going to look at it for us. And this will tell us what the most exploitative line 
was here. And I think we could also look at the GTO here as well. I think we can look at the GTO here as well. We'll take a look in a second. So the most exploitable line here is we should be betting, and from an exploited point of view, 95% of our range here in the small blind. Uh, Oh, you know what? This ain't. This isn't gonna work. Hang on, I gotta back this up because we want to lock this here. We want to lock this in here uh, because this is the range that we get to the turn with. See, when I just did that, it was doing based on my preflop ranges, but obviously this is the range that we got to the turn with. So we want to definitely just lock in, lock this in here, and do this again. Okay. Now, now this is is correct. This is the hands that I actually had, <laughs> so it doesn't take the other hands. It's very important. So let's see what it feels like um, I should be doing here. The raise comes in, and it says I should be raising as a max exploit. I should be raising quads, full house, three of a kind. It also says I should be shoving all in with my over pairs right because this was a shove right so it's actually saying that i should be doing this with all of my over pairs as well my two pairs this is the max exploit what are these hands here okay oh not flush your hands all right it's fine um Really interesting, huh? How about that? Calling wise, what are we calling here? We're calling ace eight. So we're calling our eights, the 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 ace eights, and we're calling our king six flush draw. But as you can see, we are still folding all of our nut draws here. Now. Obviously, we're folding 10-9 offsuit. That goes without saying. We're still folding 10-9 offsuit no matter what. Um, calling the combo draws. So the really the interesting aspect of this here is the max exploit for the highest EV. So the highest EV plays. Because this is what this is really looking at here is what will be the most plus EV way, uh, plays here. Um you know, almost like this is almost like an optimizer in a way. Um, you know, like I used to play daily fantasy sports, daily fantasy sports, um, you would make optimal lineups. This is like looking at an optimal lineup. Okay, in this particular play here, uh, when he raises us here, the most the most optimal play, the most exploited play here is going to actually be to raise these over pairs and and the the two pairs shoving them all in. It's really interesting when you think about it. Really interesting when you think about it on this particular board. That we just should be shoving in two pair or better. And not over pair or better. And that includes nines. So the last thing we can take a look at here, see if it works. Sometimes it doesn't seem to work for me. Um is going to be uh the GTO tool. So I'm going to save this too. I think this is really interesting. So let me just save this here. Exploit. And let's just do the GTO tool. Okay, great. It's going to work. And now we're just going to see what is the GTO way to go. Again, locking in my... Uh, my decision here. Very important to this exercise. By the way, it's amazing that we're doing all of this to figure out was one play correct or incorrect. But it's great. So let's see what GTO says. So as you can see already, GTO is saying something completely different. GTO is saying raising 12% of our hands, calling 39, and folding. But GTO, you know, obviously is really for versus better opponents. This opponent is not a bad opponent. Actually, 
I have some suspicions about this opponent, but I won't say on video. <laughs> so let's see. Obviously, our GTO looks a lot more complicated uh, the GTO solution. Um, 10 9 also, though, even GTO is still going to be a fold. <laughs> uh, so let's take a look here. Um, we would be raising quads, obviously. Um, does this give us bet sizing, by the way? Uh, the bet sizing remains the same, which is fine. Um, so, interesting here that the GTO says we would actually be calling our, uh, our nut flushes here. Except for the A6, the A6 actually, the best, actually, the best way to really look at this here is actually going to be looking at weight. Because, like, you can see A6 here, we're doing a little bit of everything. Um, we'd be raising at 18% of the time, calling at 67% of the time. There's actually a time, uh, sometimes we'd be folding our A6 suited, too. But for the most part, we'd be calling it. So we look at it that way more so is, is the weights are probably really the best way to look at it from a GTO perspective. Um, where the king's most of the time here, we're, we're folding. Except for the king eight. Um, we could raise it a tiny percentage of the time, and most of the time we're calling them here. But, you know, the interesting thing is really going to be these pocket pairs. So here, the over pairs here, um, they have us calling these most of the time. And what about the two pair? The two pair, they, we're calling it most of the time too. So I think what's what's interesting about this is when we compare the GTO from what I did, but then we look at the most exploitative play. Now, for me, I want to be playing more of an exploitative style at this particular uh, at this particular time. I want to be playing more exploitative. So I really find it very interesting that I would be shoving all in with um, with over pairs there, where here we would just be just be calling. Um, and you know the hands that we're folding, by the way, are going to pretty much be um, gut shots, OESDs, which we don't really have too many of here. I mean, the OES, OESDs that we're calling are going to be also flush draws. <clears throat> so it's, this is very interesting because obviously my thought, as you can see from my thought process of what we saw when I was calling was more GTO than it was exploitative. So the question is, okay, what is wrong? What is right? What is the right way to play it? Um, it's very interesting. It's actually really interesting. Um, now, I think at this stage in NL25, we want to be more exploitative, less GTO. Uh, but versus an opponent like this, which is a reg, okay, maybe GTO style is closer to it, especially we're playing an ACR, playing against more bots. Just saying. Um, so maybe calling with these over pairs as opposed to um, as opposed to raising them all in is the right play. Um, so definitely an interesting thing to think about. I'm curious if you, assuming you watch this video all the way through, I don't know how many of you guys actually watch this video all the way through. I would love to know your comments. What would you do with these over pairs? Would you raise them or would you just call them? Um, you know, they're vulnerable hands. Raising them all in, you know, I mean, are we technically talking about the buff? Maybe not, but, you know, we could still be getting value from them. Especially if we have a guy here who might be raising eights. You know, things change, of course, if he's not raising eights. Um, but we put in the fact that he is raising eights. I mean, if you want to just take a look at something, let's just take another quick look. I'm sorry, this video is super long, but I think it's really a great video. Um, well, actually, the GTO, um, GTO actually um, makes him a GTO player too. So uh, that's the one thing about GTO. The difference between the GTO tool and the Max Exploit tool is the GTO tool actually calculates the entire hand here. Um, so. 
so GTO actually has him raising his quads. What does he have? G GTO. All right, so this is interesting. That's the one thing about the GTO is GTO has him raising. Basically, as I'm raising the quads, actually, uh, one second, I'll pause the video again. <laughs> I gotta think about something. Okay. Right, he didn't have any full houses in this range. So uh, he's got him raising uh, the quads and the sets. And that makes sense. Doesn't have him raising any... Uh... I don't know why I can't punch this up right now. For some reason, the space bar function isn't working here. Um, but, okay, we have it on the side here. Three of a kind, so... Yeah, I mean, he's just raising up quads and three of a kind. So it's interesting. I, I guess that's kind of what might make more sense because, obviously, they have him raising a much smaller uh, range than I actually had him raising, which would make sense on why we'd be calling a lot more hands here. So, But we know that, that you know he's playing a little bit looser than us here. So that's why the max exploit tool comes in better more handy here in this spot. So let's take a look. I just want to go and open up my exploit. Uh, let's just save this. Um, so That's why I really don't think GTO is like super relevant at this stage because players aren't playing like that. I mean, they. Could, I mean, he could be. Well, players are playing like that. I shouldn't say that, but this player, I believe, is is raising a lot looser, um, based on what we've seen from his history. Um. So, but let's just say, okay, let's just say hypothetically, right? He is not doing this with those eights. So let's take away the eights. Okay, and I'm just going to be looking at the max exploit here. Um, so now that's going to end up falling into his... Uh, let's run this again. Because now you're going to see that the 8s are going to fall here, right? So now the max exploit... Oh, we ra see we're raising less here. Now, that's the big difference of the 8s. Okay, so the, when when you look at this now... When, when we take those eights out of his raising range, we're now folding all of our over pairs. And we are shoving all in with our three of a kind in our full houses. And we are calling our eights, except for um, just these eights with the clubs in them, which makes sense because uh, the, the, uh, the ace high clubs uh, blocks out any of his potential bluffs. So that's why we wouldn't be calling with the Ace of Clubs. Um, and we're calling with the uh, the flush draws here. So you'll notice even here, now when we take those 8s out, when we take the possibility of him raising 8s out, we're even flushing, we're even folding those combo draws. So a huge difference here when because now we'll take a look here. Uh, let's see. EV is F3. These would actually be minus EV, probably. I'll, I'm going to take a look in a second. I'm going to take a look in the other. Uh, yeah, so that's interesting. So when you take the 8s out, that makes a huge difference. But it's possible that he's raising those. We've seen from his history that it's possible he is raising hands like that. Now, the population in general probably isn't raising hands like that. Um, so, 
you know, I could run a population analysis too, just to see normally what the population is doing in that kind of spot, at least maybe what regs are doing in that spot. Regs are probably not doing that. Um, I could actually do that. It might be interesting just to take a look and see if regs are raising um, in these spots with a hand with hands like that. That's something actually I can really do. Um, I'm not sure how much sample size we're going to have, of course, to make it relevant, but it might be interesting to do that. Um, so let's just see. I'm just curious about something here. So let's save this and let's open up my original manual one. I don't want to do that same thing. I want to take eights out. Let's run the max exploit tool. Oh, no, we're not doing exploit. We just want to do uh, EV. So let's see. Now, as you can see, those over pairs are minus EV. And even the all of these hands here are minus EV too. So all those combo draws now are minus EV as well. So yeah, the eights, the eight makes like such a huge difference. It makes such a huge difference because again, when you put the when you put the eight in there, when you when you put that eight, those eights in there, as you can see, it changes everything. So one final thing we're going to take a look at here. I think this was really a, a great uh, exercise. Is I just want to take a look at population tendencies and see how many how many regs are actually really doing this. And it may not be like so super accurate here, but we'll take a look here. So let me bring up hand to note, and I'm going to just run a quick. I don't have a lot of hands on here on hand to note. Uh, because I've just been kind of rebuilding from scratch my database because there's a lot of data corruption with my uh, my PT4 database. Um, so for the most part, I've been building from scratch, which is fine. Um, so I want to see regs. Uh, hopefully... Hopefully this does this correctly because I've been kind of changing markers. Um, so hopefully, hopefully this doesn't kind of screw up here. Let's see. I came up with I think about let's see two hundred and sixty-five players and. Let's see. Um, I think the fault is C bet. So raise C bet. Uh, raise C bet on the turn here. So yeah, I mean the sample size is just so small. We don't really have any kind of real sample size to even really go off of here. We don't have any good sample size. So this actually is not gonna. We need definitely need more of a. Um, more of a sample. I mean, let's just take a look at the population in general. Oops, I kind of screwed that up. So instead of actually we'll just look at all opponents here. Let's just see everybody. Just, just curious. So out of 820 players, um, Raising the turn. Obviously, as you can see, overall, there's not a lot of raising on the turn going on here. Uh, but we can see, we've seen some interesting raises, though, right? Um, not a ton, of course. Like, really not a ton. Only five raises from the whole entire population. And this is just, but I mean, this is like what we know. Like, this is the, the hands that we know. So it's 11% overall. These are only the hands we know because these are the ones that went to showdown. But we can see, like, this particular hand here somebody raised with a six um because they 
they had a uh, pair of sixes. I can assume maybe this was a recreational player that did this. Uh, yeah, I don't have this guy's stats here because, um, yeah, because we don't have this guy's stats here because we're focused. He's like the hero in this case here. Um, but yeah, uh, what else, what else did, did happen here? This would be much better, of course, when I have like a much bigger database, but I still think it, that's definitely interesting. Here's tens. We know this was of this guy already. Uh, this guy did it with an over pair. This guy did it with a set and two pair, which makes more sense here. So I don't think it's completely... The bottom line is I don't think it's completely unrealistic to think that he could raise there with eights. I don't think it's impossible at all. So it's pretty interesting. So anyway, I, I know this video ran super long, but this was my study session. And I'm kind of happy for you guys to come along and see how I do my studying. As you can see, it's not like, okay... I'm like some kind of expert and just am just running through this stuff and I can do this stuff in a short amount of time. I'm constantly thinking and it's constantly thinking. And then when you think, you know, just like, just like this EV tree right here, right? Our thoughts as we're studying and we're thinking branch off into our own mental trees as well, just going into different directions. And I think that's why this ends up being just such an amazing activity and we learn from this here you know we learn that okay our opponent could possibly be raising with a hand like this now we have other hands that we can work with here we can call we can raise very interesting spot this is the way i like to use card runners ev i think this is the most effective way to use card runners ev is to find the decision points and figure out um you know kind of think about what you would do in this particular decision point i think it's the easiest way to use it you can do much more complicated stuff in here as well um which i have at, at times and we've had some fun with it uh, one other feature really quick i just wanted to show you which i kind of find kind of fun here is this uh run instruction thing which is pretty cool it doesn't really work too well actually it doesn't work too well in this situation this, this works well like if you want to actually create an entire tree then you can come up with all these crazy scenarios and stuff like that um so, like for instance, here it is, says what we're dealt here, and then, um, yeah, I guess, I guess it's a bad example. We're not gonna talk about that. Now. <laughs> I'll make another video about something like that. Anyway, uh, I appreciate you guys watching this video here. Uh, it's a new month, so hopefully, I was pretty much break even last month. So next month, hopefully, we have a huge month. I feel it. I'm gonna be going back to ignition again. Uh, I know you guys are like, what are you doing? Well, bet online, the site kept on freezing on me. <laughs> and I just can't play when I, when sites just keep on freezing on me. Uh, America's, America's card room, of course, we're going to keep on playing. Hope you guys like what you saw. Hope this was an informative video. Give you an idea of how to use card runners EV. Um, how to use a bunch of different programs. Hands and out. All this stuff here. So if you like what you saw, do me a favor. Please subscribe. Um, and until next time, Poker Dad, out.